Yep, good to go. Hello, everyone. I feel like I need to make coffee because that's how I connect with my audience. Um, we're going to talk about the science and pressure of a barista. And I've kind of noticed uh, in my traveling to different events and network networking with other coffee professionals that there has been a change in the industry. And in being that in the coffee shops before, this seems to be more of this concentration of quantity more than quality. How many people can we get through the doors? Come on, we got to sell, sell, sell. And now they figured out that that was really lacking the quality of coffee. And we see this change where a lot of farmers and roasters and uh, origin countries are coming closer to the barista themselves. And so today I want to talk about why the barista has so much pressure on him. And I want to go through some cool science stuff of coffee and kind of what we do in order to make your uh, delicious cup of coffee. So why velocity and why coffee? Why does it connect with each other? Because we're the ones that give you the velocity, right? <laughs> <laughs> Through customer service, environment, and properly extracted coffee. This particular coffee here, it's from Ecuador, it's from the farm Fica Maputo, and it's located in La Perla, Pinchicha, Ecuador. And the farm is owned by Henry Gabor, and he used to be a medical doctor for Ecuador. And he really takes a scientific approach to this coffee, all the way from germination to when it's processed. And so this coffee has been carefully processed and shipped and developed just for you. And so there's a lot of pressure between a barista in order to make all those special things that that farmer did to this coffee, all that hard work that that farmer did to this coffee, and for me to bring that out to your cup. We are the last link in that chain. So why the pressure? As you can see, because we have the farmer process, and the importer who travels to find those farmers, and the roaster. And there is a lot of science that goes into roasting in itself, which I do as well, so my pressure is even more. <laughs> so let's go through some, some things here. I want to talk and give you a little bit of uh, facts of coffee. Now, I won't go through and read all of this, but you can read there. And I think some of the cool things is that, you know, coffee drinkers, it's been proven to lower the risk of becoming al alcoholics, suffering from depression, and even suicide, and that coffee was originated in Ethiopia. Also, a really neat fact is that coffee has more aromatic and flavor compounds than wine. As a matter of fact, coffee has 1,500 aromatic and flavor profiles than to wine, which only has 200. And this chart was made by Counterculture uh, Coffee Roasting Company, and they did a great job, and you can kind of see all the flavor profiles that coffee has. Here's some of the chemistry that coffee has in it. And you can kind of break those down and go into a little more detail, but for this presentation, even, I only have 15 minutes, so let's concentrate on the thing that you guys really most enjoy about coffee, and that's the alkaloids. That's caffeine. <laughs> that's the reason why we're drinking it, right? It's to get that kick, to wake us up, to get that velocity, to bring great things to society, right? That's why we drink this fun stuff. And I just wanted to go over a little bit that a lot of people think that espresso has more caffeine than brewed coffee, and that's actually not true. Now, if you were to equal the parts, like eight ounces of espresso to eight ounces of brewed coffee, man, you'd be like jumping up and down and going crazy. But for one ounce of espresso, you see that it has about 30 to 50 milligrams of caffeine to a brewed cup of coffee, 65 to 120 and, of course, there's some different variables in there, like the brewing process, the way that it's roasted, and uh, things like that. 
But overall, <clears throat> the brew coffee has more caffeine. <clears throat> now, a lot of people, this is a big controversy, I think, in all coffee shops. And it's, a lot of people is like, I just want something that just gives me the most caffeine. What's your dark roast? What's your light roast? And actually, it, it, all the beans, it depends on the type of bean that it is. Different types of beans, coffee beans, varietal, have different amounts of caffeine. It doesn't really matter whether or not it's a light roast or a dark roast. Potentially, there could be more caffeine in dark roast only because it shrinks the beans in size the longer that you have it at 400 degrees temperature, and so therefore it might have a little more uh, beans in it and more caffeine. So that, that, that answers your argument, so stop talking about it. <laughs> so what is the barista's job? <clears throat> well, what we need to do is we need to find that golden cup. And... The Specialty Coffee Association of America and some other scientists have come up with this really neat graph here. But we have to find out a couple of things. One is that we have to have a way to, to figure out the total dissolvable solids in the coffee <clears throat> and come up with the extraction yield. And when we do that, then we can kind of take those and boom, that's what they think that the ideal optimal balance is in a cup of coffee. So, how do we figure out this? Uh, how does a barista go about trying to make your golden cup of coffee? And we have to have some tools. One, we have to have a scale, right? Which I have here. And then next, we have to have a, uh, a tool to measure up the total dissolvable solids. <clears throat> Which is, uh, there's, there's one that's called a VST and also have a little small one that I could use uh, in the coffee shop too. But either way, you just have to find out the TDS. And then I, I checked. Somebody was telling me that there's a lot of chemists in here, and I, I double-checked my math on here. Okay, so let's, ch let's check this out. So here's an example. <clears throat> so let's say that we got a uh, TDS of 2.17%. Okay? And then we multiply that by the brewed coffee mass here, which is 520 grams. And that equals to 11.284 grams. And then we take that and we put that over the dry mass, and then we get 23.76%. Is that going to be a good cup of coffee? Let's look. It's probably going to be bitter. So what does a barista do in order to kind of hone that back into that ideal optimal balance? Okay, so we have to look at maybe changing possibly the mass of the brewed coffee. So decrease the mass. So for what I did here is I did a 1 to 16 ratio. And let's say that I did get that 23.76. I might want to move that to 1 to 17 ratio, meaning that for every one gram of coffee, I use 17 grams of water or 16 grams of water. Or I could change the grind size. <clears throat> and that what that does is that helps the velocity of the coffee go into the Chemex or your cup and helps it uh, become a delicious cup by doing it that way. So change the grind. <clears throat> But that's, that's just coffee. <laughs> There's so many other things that the barista has to figure out. Oh, my gosh, I have to just figure that out on coffee? What about milk? Ah, oh, skim, whole milk, 2%. I want to mix whole milk and skim milk and make 50%. I want my milk to be hot, foam. I don't want any foam. Well, we have to do a lot in order to satisfy you, but you know what? We love doing it. And not only that, we love to make the combination of ingredients, and we love to make those work stretching the milk. And when everything goes as planned, you really get a delicious cup of coffee. You really get this orchestra of deliciousness, these wonderful aromatics. You get to socialize with other people and talk about how awesome my coffee is. You get to do really neat, beautiful things if you stretch the milk right. You get 
beautiful latte art comp- uh, composition and patterns. There was a latte art competition last night that I lost and <laughs> not very happy. But you get this connection with people and it's a wonderful thing. And I'm really glad that I got to share this with you. And I, I leave you because there is this quote that I, that I found, and it just so happens naturally that it came from the Florida State University, from Dr. Waxman, actually, when she did a study on coffee shops. And she said, baristas create, or coffee shops create, places and opportunities for connecting with fellow citizens to create a stronger attachment of place and community. And I think that it's all about peace, love, and caffeine. (laughs) Thank you very much.